Why are we doing this? Well, we work with senior leadership teams who strive to perform under pressure and we wanted to share some inspiration from some extreme teams who perform under really high pressure in the fields of professional rugby league and classical music. They're two extremes of physicality and the aesthetic, but they both adhere to the same incredibly high levels of skill and dedication and on-field leadership. At How to Impact, we look to our extensive ecosystem of deep knowledge experts, extreme users and collaborators to help find inspiration to unlock innovation challenges and make them stick. And we wanted to share some of that today. I'm really excited to find how, how both Richard and Michael have led and built the most progressive cultures in their fields, how they've overcome the barriers to bringing their visions to fruition, and how they use innovation in a live performance to improve without failure. I guess when I look at the one thing that probably really stands out for me when I come into an organisation is knowledge. You know, knowledge to my players. Everyone says, oh, you know, you, you don't need to give the players too much. I'm forever educating my players every single day. I went into NFL teams, um, I went into the Giants, Jets, um, Stanford Universities, all the sorts of different areas that all the, the teams that were excelling around those times um, just went and knocked on doors and spoke to coaches, spoke to strength and conditioners and looked at their organisations. You know, I'm continually learning all the time. So for me, to be able to have that knowledge, I can then go that back to my players and, and, and part that across the whole organisation. Collaboration with, you know, cross-cultural forms. And that, that was interesting to, to see how that worked. I mean, like working with the likes of Neil Finn and Tim Friedman from the Whitlams and Katie Noonan and uh, Johnny Greenwood from Radiohead. If we're not playing together, absolutely together, what happens is that the more you push the emotional envelope, the more likely you are for this uh, technical part of things to, to, to get out. And that's, for us, really important to find that balance. Nothing prepares you, absolutely nothing prepares you for walking on stage in the Sydney Opera House. You know, you can practice 15 hours a day for 15 years. But it's certainly nerve-wracking. And you know what's even more nerve-wracking? When you're about to walk onto that stage and you're not nervous. <laughs> and that really plays with your brain. Because if you don't have those nerves, you can walk onto that stage and you haven't worked out how to deal with him before you walk onto the stage. You, you can walk on that, onto that stage and you can get hit. Yeah, well, we count every error at training, everything that goes on at training, every, every uh, training session is videoed. So for us, we're analysing every single movement of players all the time. And there's some, sometimes there at training, I'll just say, look, the video's off, boys. And they all laugh at me, go, yeah, Big Daddy's still watching, don't worry about that. You know, and, but again, it just allows the players to experiment. And, and you've got to do that at some stages. There's a wonderful quote, one man's opinion is the opinion of a fool, but the whole audience, well, that's the, uh, the reaction of God. If you listen to every person's opinion, as I said, you'll go insane, but you have to read the crowd. And I talk about how the crowd, let's bring the crowd into the game. You know, how do we bring the crowd into the game? When the, the crowd's up cheering about how well they've played, it's, it's good fun. You know, and that obviously in, in increases the hormones in the body and all the other things that go on inside mentally. So all of a sudden that attunes you to, to wanting to play more and more. So. How do you identify their ability to work together as a team? Um, I, I do a lot of testing. I, we do a lot of profiling of our players. So I understand a lot about that player before we, we, we get them coming through our grades. Um, you know, a lot of what goes on, you know, you can be the be most talented player in the world, but if you don't want to be a part of the team, well, you know, or they, or they see themselves a little bit above and all that, eventually they're going to hurt you. Individual success will come from the team success. You know, Greg Inglis looks better because the team's succeeding. Well, I've, I've dropped players because of certain behaviours, so, and we've still been successful because everyone understands that we're one, we're not these individuals amongst what we're calling a team. We, we go out to training every day, and every now and then one player will wear a different pair of socks. And I know you think it's only a pair of socks, but why does he need to be different? That's part of our ethos of you know, how, we, how we're seen. Because it reflects on everyone, it reflects on sponsors, it reflects on everyone that's involved. What do we learn from Michael and Richard? We learn a lot. Um, we learn that actually there are way more similarities between professional rugby league and classical music than contrasts. We learned about the power of team structure and team unity, right down to the choice of socks that players wear for training. We learned about the importance of continuous progress 
and both leaders' restlessness to learn from others outside their fields. We learned about their unflinching standards and how important it is to communicate those to their team. And we learned that players perform at their very best under pressure by thinking about all eventualities and removing the fear of failure. And we learned about the power of practice, a power of practice that corporate world could learn from in making sure that they think through and rehearse every different move they could possibly have so that there is zero failure.